In this case, we can produce six different outcomes. We have three different suspects and two different methods. We have seen Blinkhorn and the Ice Knife and the Absolution. Let's see what happens when we condemn him. I'm feeling rather uncomfortable. Why have I been put into these cuffs? I fear that you had better get used to them, Mr. Blinkhorn. They are your reward for the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. What? No, that's a lie. It is regrettable, for you are a talented archaeologist. I will request that you are placed in a prison where you are unable to dig an escape tunnel. That is, of course, if they decide that you shall live. You The are... consulting detective who salutes your intelligence in performing the perfect crime, yes, but also the gentleman who detests your motivation. You know nothing. You wish to be the one who would reveal this to the world. Is that the golden knife? How... I also like to dig, you see. I only followed your trail. Such a pity that there is always someone willing to steal your credit, wouldn't you say? And there was the chance of a lifetime. You had to take it. It was not to be shared. It... Oh. But now I am here, and there is no one who will stop the tread of justice, Mr. Blinkhorn. Goodbye. The other method that we have is the silver knife. It's only one slight change. The videos for both of these are the same as what we have seen before. It's just a blurb that is slightly different. One of the reasons that we ruled out the silver knife is, well, there's plenty of reasons why, but the starting factor was the blood contained an excess amount of water. The silver knife was a red herring. So let's go on to Pitkin. Pitkin had a lot to lot to lose with this murder. It definitely was not him, but let's see what happens when we pin it on him. Why did you bring me here? I saw that you released the others. Sir Gregory, I would ask that you listen carefully to what I am intending to reveal to Inspector Lestrade. You murdered Sir Rodney Bentcliffe in cold blood, and you did it for money. What? No, that's not true. I am afraid that it is. The ingenious ghost weapon that you used only served to prove the premeditation. You are insane. It was a spectacular felony. One that intrigued the police and encouraged the press. Scandal is an excellent means of bringing the public's attention to your baths. And eventually, of course, it brought me, too. You have it all wrong. Well, I didn't expect you to possess much in the way of courage. May you be a fraction more inspired before you meet the hangman. Farewell, Sir Gregory. Again, with Pitkin, the end videos are the same. But, as always, the blur is going to be slightly different with each method. Why did you bring me here? I saw you release the others. Strictly between you and me, Sir Gregory, 
I admit that you played a masterstroke with your ghost weapon. I know that you killed Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. What? Nonsense! How dare you! That is not to say I support the crime. However, you are safe with me. You? I don't understand. The police shall hear my version of the facts, the one that shall reveal Sir Rodney's true nature. He was a genuine adversary, was he not, Sir Gregory? He was corrupt. Well, he certainly was. But I never did such a... Would you rather I change my mind? I trust that you will preserve the tranquility of these baths in the future, Sir Gregory. I... I don't know what to say, Mr. Holmes. Lestrade, if I might have a word with you, please. I'm still quite unsure on this version of Sherlock Holmes. This is an interesting concept, but they have turned him into a bit of a dick. So we have seen Pitkin's outcomes. Let's see Garrow's. So we can blame this on Garrow's state of mind. Again, this seemed like a big red herring. Mr. Garrow, the game is up. I see straight through you. You see straight... what? You have a decided talent in mind manipulation. We all believed your comedy. The medication almost tricked me, I'll admit, but all of it was fake. The hallucinations, the hysteria. Mr. Garrow, you are a dangerous psychopath and a clever murderer. The method by which you disposed of the crime weapon... Oh my God! I, I killed him. It is no use to deny it. I despise cowardice in any form. What, what, what will you do with me? You will be sent to a medical institute, where you will receive the best treatment to facilitate your full rehabilitation. What the good Dr. Watson is trying to say is, life seclusion in a lunatic asylum awaits you. I would rather be dead. That is your choice. Blaming Garrow is definitely the easy way out. I did not like that at all. But this is the last outcome. Again, the only difference with these is the blurb. Mr. Garrow, allow me to introduce you to Dr. Watson. Mr. Garrow, please do not be alarmed. We only wish to help you. You were under an intolerable stress, but it's over now. What? I can attest that your medication affected your judgment. You will not recall, but it caused you to temporarily lose control. Did I? Uh, are you saying I uh, killed Sir Rodney? I am afraid so. For as my doctor will persist in reminding me every single day, drugs can be harmful. You developed a malevolent obsession with Sir Rodney. You believed him to be unworthy, sacrilegious. Oh, do not distress yourself. Prison is clearly not a suitable environment for you. What is my environment, then? You're suffering from an acute form of melancholia, but you can and will be cured. All you need is rest... And detoxification, I will take care of every detail. 